In the second round with a 52nd overall pick, the Indianapolis Colts select Kamoko Ture, edge rusher, Rutgers. The thing about this kid that everyone loves is his rare combination of length and speed, burst, agility. He might have the highest ceiling of any edge rusher in this entire draft. He's got tremendous burst off the edge. He's got long arms. He can keep blockers off of him. Unlimited potential. He's got slithery athleticism with rare flexibility. Explosive pass rusher and often wins on second effort. He's a tough, confident kid and did really, really well at the Senior Bowl. So he, he really showed out against the best players in college. He's got the most potential probably of any pick of this entire draft. But he's got a lot of work to do. He was not very productive at Rutgers. He had seven sacks his freshman year and then only six sacks his final two combined. He played standing up in college as a 3-4 outside linebacker, so he's going to have to transition from an outside linebacker or a 3-4 to a defensive end in the 4-3, which is a little bit easier to do than the reverse of that. He needs to add more moves to his pass rush repertoire, which is basically right now it's just speed. He's a one-trick pony. He really has... No counter move after his initial rush. He's extremely raw in every way. He does not locate the ball in the run game at all. He has a lot of missed tackles due to lack of upper body strength. He's got to get stronger. He's got limited instincts. He struggles to read screens, draws, and other misdirection plays. He plays way too high and gets obliterated by double teams. And he's also injury prone. He had shoulder injuries in the 2015-2016 season. This kid is extremely raw. Like, a lot of people love this pick. I did not like this pick at all. He's so raw. There were other guys, Harold Landry, we could have taken earlier in the draft. The entire second round, and I'll get to this in my draft recap, but the entire second round, I felt like, were reaches. A lot of people love this guy, but I'm just not a big fan because I saw a lot of issues on tape. The entire second round, I think the word to sum it up was raw. It was a potential round, which is kind of disappointing because going into it, when you have three picks in the second round, all value picks, picking back-to-back, 36-37, and then we ended up having four picks after the trade. So when you have four picks in the second round, going into it with the expectations to have the three picks, you're really expecting to come out of there with guys who are heading into the NFL with a lot of high praise and coming off you know, great college careers, and that's not really what happened. And then, like, I saw on Twitter when you were talking about how you're disappointed, you thought Ballard reached for guys in the second round. One thing I want to say is me and Jason have been two of the biggest pro Ballard guys there are. I openly admit I'm not a huge draft guy. Outside of the first round, my knowledge is very minuscule when it comes to the draft. And as our like draft analyst, Jason, I kind of let you take over draft stuff, draft questions in the Q&A and go with it. So I stand by your opinions and stuff. But we've been huge pro Ballard guys every step of the way. This is really the first time you disagreed with something Ballard did or we disagree with something he did. So it's okay. It's healthy to disagree once in a while. We're allowed to disagree with Ballard here and there. We don't have to agree with every single thing the guy does. And we thought he kind of missed on this second round a little bit in comparison to the expectations we had going into this round. But that's fine. Just because you hate Ryan Grigson doesn't mean you have to hate everything he does. He drafts T.Y. Hill and we like it. He drafts Clint Gathers. We like it. Like You're allowed to like things that guys do even if you don't like them. So Chris Ballard, we love him. We've loved everything he's done up until this point. But it's okay if he does something that you disagree with to call it out and say, I disagree with this. I wouldn't have done this. And let's root for all these players. We hope that Ballard Ballard nailed the second round, and in five years from now, we look stupid when we go back. But you got to be honest. We've been honest every time we've ever come on this podcast. We've called out Pagano. We've called out Gritchen. We've praised Ballard. We gave our feelings on the whole Josh McDaniel situation. We've talked about Frank Reich. So we've always been honest, and we'll always be honest. For anybody that's paid attention to what was going on on Twitter this week, that's the way we feel. Yeah, and I just want to add this. There's literally one thing I haven't liked that Ballard's done. It was the second round of this draft. That's it. And even that, I understand his thinking. I thought he reached on the players. I'm not saying they're not going to be good players, but I still understand what his thought process was. He wanted to improve both the offensive line and the defensive line, and I'm a proponent of that. I think you win games and you build your team from the inside out. I've said that all along. So it's not that I don't think these guys can't be good, and it's not that I don't understand what he's trying to do, because I do. It's just... I thought there were better players on the board when we picked. All that said, I hope I am 100% wrong. 
and all you people that were coming at me on Twitter are all right because that will mean that all these guys turned out to be really good players and I was wrong because at the end of the day, we're all about winning. The draft is fun and, and I like prepping for it and watching film and doing all that. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is on the field and winning games. And I think we can all agree on that. And that's the bottom line. So I hope I'm wrong. I hope I am because that means they're all good players. It means we're probably winning a lot of games. And you said it perfectly. These are raw guys. So they're guys you are going to bring them in. You're going to coach them up. And you're going to hope that you could maximize their potential. They're not terrible players. Like if we had a show when Ryan Grigson drafted Philip Dorsett, 29th overall in 2015, we would have come in here, guns a-blazing, ripping that guy to shreds. We just weren't a huge fan of these picks because they didn't have great production in college. And I see a lot of people saying, oh, well, nobody's done anything yet. Quinn Nelson hasn't done anything yet. Nobody's done anything yet in the NFL. Well, they did just have college careers, so we are going to go yeah, based on, on what film. we've seen. It's all on film. I just want to say this. I really wanted them to take Harold Landry. Everybody knows that. I think he's the best pass rusher in the draft. But one thing everybody was telling me about Ture is he's got all this upside, and Harold Landry was an injury-prone player, blah, 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 which is, I wouldn't say injury-prone. He had one year where he had one injury, but... Therese had injury issues, too. I mean, he had two years where he had major shoulder issues that limited his play. That's a concern with this guy. It's not like he's got a 100% clean bill of health. Shoulder injuries, especially when you're moving to defensive end and you're going to be dipping and doing all that stuff, that's a concern for me. And his lack of production in college was a concern for me. He was extremely talented and has all the speed and all that stuff that you want in a player, and he did not have a lot of production despite being more talented than the guys he was going against. So that gives me pause, whereas Harold Landry dominated. He had, I think, 16 sacks in one year. He didn't have 16 sacks his entire career at Rutgers. So that's my issue. Harold Landry was on the board. Connor Williams was on the board. Like I said earlier, I'll get into most of this stuff when I give my draft grade, but that was my issue. I thought there were better players on the board. 